Darren Marlar Radio Show Audio Rewind. Coming up, uh, if you are a rare liar, an occasional liar, maybe you're a frequent liar, well, we're going to find out which one of those you fit into, or maybe not. Uh, maybe I'm lying about that. You don't know, and you won't know until you continue tuning in, so keep tuning in. I'm Darren Marlar. If you're feeling a little claustrophobic at work, well, there might be a good reason for that. Your cubicle might be shrinking. According to a report in Wired magazine, the standard office cubicle it has shrunk by as much as 50% in recent years. That's down to 30 square feet. The magazine also notes that, by comparison, most coffins uh, they measure 15 square feet, and the typical prison cell at San Quentin is a spacious 70 square feet. So, if you think about it, work is better than death, but worse than prison. Important assignment! Important assignment! Did I make it clear that your job is at stake? You've never been out of college. You don't know what it's like out there. I've worked in the private sector. They expect results. What a filthy job! I don't like my job, and uh, I don't think I'm going to go anymore. Human beings were not meant to sit in little cubicles staring at computer screens all day filling out useless forms and listening to eight different bosses drone on about mission statements. I hate it here. Of course you hate it. People work here. I'm Darren Marlar, and if you'd like to hear the Darren Marlar radio show anytime, well, you can find it at DarrenMarlar.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. Up next, we've got our birthday wrap-up, but first, you know, it is a rare individual who gets through an entire day without telling a lie. Now, most lies are harmless, you know, those so-called white lies, uh, and they're told to avoid hurting somebody's feelings. But others are, are bigger lies, and they're told to protect ourselves. Well, it turns out that telling the truth when you're tempted to lie, it can actually improve your mental and physical health. On average, the typical American lies about 11 times per week. And we wanted to find out if living more honestly can actually cause better health," said lead author Anita E. Kelly, a professor of psychology at the University of Notre Dame. And she says, "...we found out that the participants could purposefully and dramatically reduce their everyday lies, and that in turn was associated with significantly improved health." Over the course of the 10-week study, the link between less lying and improved health it was significantly stronger for participants in the no-lying group. For example, when participants in the no-lying group told three fewer white lies than they did in other weeks, they experienced on average about four fewer mental health complaints, such as feeling tense or melancholy, and about three fewer physical complaints, such as th uh, such as uh, sore throats and headaches. Hi, my name's Bob, and I'm a... All right, my name's really Bill, and I'm a compulsive liar. Yeah, right. No, really, I truly am a compulsive liar. Well, then how do we know you're not lying right now? Compulsive yeah. Liars Anonymous can help. Get together with people who suffer the same compulsion as you. Meetings are Thursday nights at 6. No, they're not. They're Tuesdays at noon. You're all liars. There's no such group. Call 1-800-555-1212. That's not the number. 1-800-555-3231. That's not it either. Why? Oh, just quit it. Just because your commute is only 20 seconds long and your dress code is a t-shirt and underpants, well, that does not mean that stress can't find you in your home office. If you work from home, then our next story coming up is for you. I'm Darren Marlar, and if you want to get a free gift from your teacher at school, well, no problem. Just show up late all the time. You can get rewarded for it. If going to school and showing up late, well, what happens to you, right? I mean, you're usually punished for that, right? Detention, uh, failing that day's work grade, uh, you know, you're at least written up for it, right? Maybe not on that permanent record that we hear about, but, uh, but in Manchester, England, if you show up late to school there, they give you a free alarm clock. Yeah, staff at St. James Primary School, they hope this scheme will ensure children to turn up on time for their lessons. Teacher Gwen Osborne came up with this idea after a brother and sister who were always late for class told her that uh, told her that is that they didn't have their own alarm clock. Well, so now why didn't I think of this in school? I mean, first, 
I would have said that I didn't have a clock and, and then the school would give me one, right? And then I would say, oh, I couldn't concentrate on studies because I didn't have any food at home and then maybe I'd get free school lunches. And then I would say that I'm late to school all the time because I didn't have a car. It must be true because I heard it on the radio. It must be true. It must be true. Coming up in today's Moment of Duh, a New Jersey man trying to exterminate insects ends up exterminating his entire apartment instead. Hey, I'm Darren Marlar. If you'd like to be a part of the show, you can visit the radio show page at DarrenMarlar.com, and that way you can send me an email for my email bag, and I'll read it here on the air. Uh, just go to DarrenMarlar.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com, and then click on Radio Show. Well, just because your commute is 20 seconds long, your dress coat is a t-shirt and underpants, it does not mean that stress can't find you if you work at home. To explore how our ubiquitous digital devices are affecting telecommuters or those who work remotely, a study looked at employees in 15 countries, including the United States, uh, the UK, and Japan. And the researchers found that although there are many positives to working from home or off-site, like increased autonomy, better flexibility, no commute, uh, well, the way that the workday can spill over into your personal time, that can be a big negative. They report that 41% of mobile employees felt stressed, compared with only 25% of the cubicle jockeys, and a full 42% had trouble sleeping, with only 29% of office workers reporting insomnia. And you know, seeing as I do this show from home, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go take a quick nap during this next song. The Darren Marlar Radio Show. Every day that you breathe, you make my life harder. Oh, this is going to be fun. Are you a twit face? Send Darren a message through Facebook, Twitter, or his website at DarrenMarlar.com. It's the Darren Marlar Radio Show, and if you'd like to keep up with everything I do, well, you can sign up for my free newsletter. It's called The Marlar Sheet. You can sign up for it at DarrenMarlar.com. It's time for today's Moment of Duh, and a New Jersey man trying to exterminate insects has ended up exterminating his entire apartment. Isaiah, uh, Isaias Maceda, he was not injured in the accident, but 80% of his apartment has been destroyed. Edentown, New Jersey police said the accident occurred as Maceda was spraying for pets, in his, or pests, that is, in his kitchen. Uh, well, somehow the bug spray ignited and a blast blew out the apartment's front windows and triggered a fire that quickly spread. The blaze also caused smoke damage to the apartment upstairs. Duh. Learn everything you need to know to cope with OCPD. In Obsessive Compulsive Personality Disorder, the ultimate guide to symptoms, treatment, and prevention, you'll learn about OCPD and how it can impact a person's life. This book covers a variety of topics regarding narcissism, such as the subtypes of OCPD, symptoms of the disorder, as well as how to overcome it. If you're looking for a book to better understand how to identify the causes of Obsessive Compulsive Personality Disorder, you'll find it in this short book. After learning about the causes, you'll learn about various treatment methods and different types of therapy that are available for those suffering from OCPD. Obsessive Compulsive Personality Disorder – The Ultimate Guide to Symptoms, Treatment, and Prevention by Clayton Jeffries. Hear a sample on the audiobooks page at MarlarHouse.com. This is the Darren Marlar Radio Show Audio Rewind. Be honest with me, do you struggle in the afternoon to stay awake? Well, there is a better remedy than coffee, soda, or even that energy drink, and I'll tell you what it is coming up in just a moment. I'm Darren Marlar. You know, sometimes you, you just have to take a vacation from the news. A recent study it confirms what we've all pretty much known – bad news stresses us out, and it's worse for women. Reading depressing news, it affects both men and women, but women hold on to that stress much longer than we guys do. On, on the other hand, uh, men, we probably shake off the stress by forgetting the stories faster. Women tend to remember the details to bad news far longer than men. 
And well, yeah, I mean, of course the women remember the bad things longer. I mean, how else can they throw it back in our faces during an argument several years later? Oh yeah, well, you didn't come home until 3 a.m. that one night in October of 2008. You found. You have brought, brought the disaster down upon us. The Darren Marlar Radio Show. I'm a sad little man. I, I love his ears. The federal appeals court is saying N-O to a nasty N-O-T-E on T-P. That story is up next. Hey, if you'd like to uh, like me, poke me, tweet me, uh, follow me, stalk me, you can find links to all of my uh, social media at DarrenMarler.com. Well, put the coffee cup down, all right? Don't, don't go anywhere near that soda machine. If you want to jolt yourself awake around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, well, uh, you know, when you, you know, those afternoon doldrums that we get when we're at work, well, try climbing up and down the nearest set of stairs instead. That's the word from researchers at the University of Georgia in Athens who found that 10 minutes of walking up and down stairs at a regular pace, that does more to make you feel energized than drinking a cup of coffee or a can of soda. A study found that neither caffeine nor exercise caused large improvements in attention or memory, but stairwalking was associated with a small increase in motivation for work, albeit temporary. So why the stairs? Well, office workers, they can go outside and walk, but weather, that can be a little bit less than ideal sometimes. And a lot of people working in office buildings, they have access to stairs. So it's an option to keep some fitness while taking a short break from work. How did this delightful chance encounter go south so quickly? The Darren Marlar Radio Show. I'm suffering for what you've done to this town. That is not fair. Well, it's it's that time of the day for our brain on drug story, and you know it's it's always about people doing dumb things under the influence. But addiction is no laughing matter. If you or somebody you know needs help, there is a toll-free number that you can call. It's 1-800-438-0380. That's the Addiction Hope and Helpline, 1-800-438-0380. In today's story, a federal appeals court is saying N-O to a nasty N-O-T-E on TP. This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> Texas prison inmate George Morgan sent a vulgar message to a prosecutor written on a piece of toilet paper. He claimed he was just exercising his constitutional right of free speech, but a federal appeals court upheld a lower court ruling tossing out his claim. The court said prison administrators had the right to dock Morgan 15 days of good time credits for this little TP stunt. Morgan is serving a 23-year term on drug dealing charges. This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> Any questions? If you missed yesterday's show or a show before that, or maybe you missed part of today's show and you want to catch it later, you can uh, actually find it in my free mobile app, which you can download. Uh, just to look for Marlar House in your phone app store. It's absolutely free. Marlar is M-A-R-L-A-R. -R. Search for Marlar House in your phone app store, and you can download it and, and do a lot of stuff on my uh, on my app, including get the podcast. Well, CBS News they've reported that sea levels are uh, they will be up by four feet by the year 2214 you know, far, far into the future so nobody will be embarrassed or even remember this prediction when it turns out to be false. Tonight, tune into the Weather Channel that gives you only the facts. It's the Fox Weather Channel, the only fair and balanced weather broadcast on cable today. Flash floods hit the East Coast today, causing many to question why Greenpeace wants to save the oceans when the oceans are trying to kill us. Fox's Weather Channel, eliminating the liberal bias found on left-wing weather channels. Phoenix, Arizona reported a record low temperature yesterday. So much for global warming. So when you want your weather fair and balanced without liberal bias, just tune into the Fox Weather Channel. This is a no-spin zone, so don't expect any tornado warnings on this broadcast. Well, you've heard the joke that there's a Starbucks on every corner, right? Well, not true. It's just, that's just silly, of course. But there is one within 20 miles of 80% of Americans, and the furthest you should ever have to drive to get to your coffee fix from a Starbucks-owned store is 140 miles. And the gas for that trip, that roughly equals the same amount as a Starbucks venti mocha. Just got home and what the heck? 
Starbucks on the way out here next week They're gonna build 40 more Lack of space is setting in Pretty soon they're building Do, do, do Starbucks at my back door Apparently driving is more than just dangerous, it's unhealthy. Got that story for you coming up. I'm Darren Marlar, and if you'd like to hear this show anytime, you can find it at DarrenMarlar.com. Well, you know, it's no wonder that we can't resist dessert. I mean, we hate to diet, right? Well, our brains are wired that way. Specifically, it is a hunger-sensitive ce uh, cell in the brain known as AGRP neurons, and those are responsible for creating those unpleasant feelings of hunger that so often lead us to fall off the diet wagon. Um, so it, it, it's really no surprise if you think about it. It's those negative emotions associated with hunger that make it so hard to maintain the diet, lose the weight. Well, while these neurons, they don't directly drive us to eat, we can't really blame them specifically for forcing us to eat, they do make us desire food so that those unpleasant hunger pangs will go away. And it's not just hunger, either. Uh, the research team also found separate sets of neurons in the brain that generate unpleasant feelings of thirst. So I guess we can blame beer consumption on this, too. It is amazing how happy the Darren Marlar will look after a haircut. The Darren Marlar Radio Show. Microbiologists from Britain's Aston University, they found that the typical car has 283 different types of bacteria present in every square inch. The dirtiest part of the vehicle, it was the gear stick home to 356 germs per square inch. Drivers with children and pets, uh, they were found to host a greater number of uh, range of bacteria in their cars, which I guess shouldn't be a surprise. The study uh, found British motorists spend more than three years of their life behind the wheel, and over a quarter eat there every week. Uh, you know what? I used to be that way. I used to eat in my car every single day. Uh, one in four car owners said their car is littered with food wrappers and empty drink bottles. Uh, all right, I wasn't quite that bad. Uh, one in six admitted to regularly leaving uneaten food in their vehicle. Oh. Ugh, what does that taste like? The most significant event on the internet today. Listen up. The Darren Marlar Radio Show. The Darren Marlar you have to continue to personally, personally torture me? Hey, thanks for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the show. It's actually a good thing we are at the end of the show right now. I just realized that when I ate before the show, instead of eating my rice cake, I ate my Styrofoam coffee cup, and it tasted better. Good night, ladies. Good night, sir. Hit it, sweetheart. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>